very, very nice. And, uh, you guys are blessed uh, to be here. And um, I'm sure it's not the fanciest church on the, on the block or around the city. And uh, maybe a lot of uh, bells and whistles aren't here. I don't know. But um, you got, you got solid faith going on here and solid teaching and, uh, and a call to holiness. Can I get an amen yes. on that? Yes. A call to holiness. You know, uh, yeah, I've got to have my child raised for it with me. You know, salvation is no fun without holiness. Amen. Yeah, it doesn't get fun amen. until you get separated to the Lord yes. and, uh, and get sold out for Him. I remember uh, right after I first got saved, I was, uh, oh, I was months, months after I got saved. And, I ran into an old friend that knew me as someone that just did every kind of drug and smuggled drugs and all this stuff. And she said, Daphne, what is up with this thing I hear that you're like into Jesus or something? I go, oh no, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Righteousness is fun. Yeah. Yeah. struggling with uh, yeah. whether you ought to sell out to the Lord or not. Yeah. Just give it up. And that's when it gets rich and sweet and good. Yeah. Um, holiness is fun. Yeah. It is flat out fun. It rocks. Yeah. 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 It does. Completely rocks. Amen. To walk with the Lord, to walk in the Spirit, to hear from Him, to hear from God. Yeah. You know, what about that? To hear from God. But if your ears are all full of the things of the world and the stuff out there, you might not be able to hear your father's sweet voice. Right, right. You should be That's hearing right. it regularly. Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. Righteousness is fun. Amen. 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 All right, let's uh, bow our heads and hearts before we open the word. Thank you, Father, for uh, for being uh, my parent. Lord, yeah. I, I never really had. Uh, Parenting, Lord, until I met you. And then uh, I, I received a, a Heavenly Father that is beyond my uh, imagination. Thank you, Lord, for uh, indiscriminately coming nigh to all of us, regardless of our sin, regardless of our rebellions, regardless of our failures. Uh, you're still our Father. You may spank us, you may hurt us hard. But that means we're your kids, and I uh, thank you for that adoption that I received. Thank you, Lord, for your uh, goodness and mercy. Bless us as we look in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I, um, I was thinking about, um, as I was on the airplane, um, I guess day before yesterday, and I was thinking... You know, what, what makes this job so hard? You know, this, this should just be fun. There's a lot of nice people here. What makes this job hard? And here's my answer. What makes this job hard is I really, really, really care if you show up at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Right. I really care right. if you make it to eternity. You know, if I was just um, selling you some clothes, or I was a mechanic and fixing your car, or whatever, I would hope that your car would do okay, or you'd like that sweater you just bought. And that doesn't have the ramifications. I really, really want you to be at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Do you understand that's going to be the best dinner you've ever been to in your life? It's going to be completely wild. Besides, I'm going to be jumping across the table and you going, you made it! Oh my goodness! You're here! And uh, sliding down that table looking for somebody else with the food flying. I got it all pictured in my mind. And that's just me. <laughs> and you guys will all be seated quietly. Except for me. Hey, it's going to be a wild event as far as I'm concerned. We go wildly stopping you. Never stop. 
starting on a whole new journey out there with the Lord. It's just going to, I don't know what to say. It's going to rock. It's beyond the wildest creation. What God has in store for his people. And so that holy call, come out from among them. Be ye separate. Come on. Give you into the full call of God. Walk with him. Be sold out. Be dedicated. Yeah, that's his call to his bride. That's his call. That's, that's what the, the scream is night and day. Come out. Come out. Be part of my kingdom and not part of the kingdom of this world. And, uh, and that's the, the most serious call. Every little decision you make during the day to make a decision for the Lord, for righteousness, for what's good and true and pure. Over what's worldly and borderline and carnal, every decision you make honors, glorifies the Lord, and all the more brings you closer to Him and to that bride and into that covenant. Not that I think, not that I'm saying we, we earn our way for that ticket to the marriage supper, but, you know, faith without works is dead. And uh, dead faith never saved anybody. And if faith isn't in our life producing something, then it's not faith. It's just some kind of mental belief. We need uh, living faith that captivates our heart, captivates our souls. And um, this concept of just believing some doctrines, if that were true, of course the scripture says the devils believe and they tremble. I've met people who got into, I used to go every Wednesday night to this little town, above Grass Valley called Camptonville and preach in the bar all night long, every Wednesday night. Here comes the preacher. And uh, these guys that sit on this bar say, oh, I believe in Jesus. Oh, yeah, I believe in Jesus. He died for my sins. I go, what's that doing for you? Look at you. What's that? Do you believe everything? I believe the whole Bible. How's that working? You know? How's that working for you? Just believe it. That's not working. Faith is like a volcano. Yes. When it gets in your heart, it explodes with uh, works and a desire to be close to God and a love for His Word. It's powerful. It's like a, a bomb inside of us. Real faith. Belief is something else. I mean, I uh, you know we can believe a lot of things that don't affect our lives. I'm going to uh, read uh, from Matthew 25, if you want to look there with me. And, um, Matthew 24 as well. And uh, this... Um, Actually, I told Janie, I was talking to Janie on the phone, Janie, a couple of years ago. You may not remember this, but at the time I said I could preach this parable in Matthew 25 for the rest of my life now. I'm ready to preach this the rest of my life. Because the Lord is coming soon and it's very, very serious that you show up at the marriage yeah. supper. Yeah. It's really serious. So we need to take heed to the warnings that are thick throughout the Word of God about Lord. those that don't make it. Verse 1, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten bridesmaids, or ten virgins, who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, five were wise. The five who were foolish didn't take enough olive oil for their lamps, but the other five were wise enough to take along extra oil. Mm -hmm. When the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, they were roused by the shout, Look, the bridegroom's coming. Come out and meet him. All the bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. Then the five foolish ones asked the others, Please, give us some of your oil, because our lamps are going out. But the others replied, we, we don't have enough for all of us. Go to a shop and buy some for yourselves. But while they were gone to buy oil, the bridegroom came. And then those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was locked. Later, when the other five bridesmaids returned, they stood outside calling, Lord, Lord, open the 
open the door for us. And he called back, believe me, I don't know you. So you too must keep watch, for you do not know the day or hour of my return. Very powerful uh, passage there. And um, I'm going to be reading something from Matthew 24 if you want to stay right there. I want to tell you a little story to start this and, and, uh, and, and help convey what I want to say this morning, what I feel like the Lord's put on my heart. I, uh, I worked in... Uh, for a, an entire summer in the underground church in China. Underground meaning it's against the law there to uh, have a, a, a church that's not state sponsored. And so if you're a believer, you have to meet secretly. It's still against the law in China. So um, how you gather in China, I, I, I worked there for a whole summer, and uh, how, how they do their meetings is, let's say their meetings at 7 in the evening. Well, they have to start gathering starting about, I don't know, 6.15. One person comes at 6.15, one is scheduled to come at 6.21, another one comes at, uh, from a different direction at 6.22, another one comes at 6.40, another one comes at 6.41, and everybody's got a time ahead of time. They have to come from different directions and we can't come at the same time. Because if the state police sees uh, too many people gathering somewhere, they will come in and find out what it's all about. Because you're not really even allowed to gather there except for their political uh, local meetings. So it gets a lot to have a gathering even. So um, it has to, it takes till about 7.30, it takes uh, over an hour to gather. So they'll start at 7 and people are praising and worshiping and singing. They have to sing pretty quietly, but um, they sing until everybody gets there and, uh, and sing some more and then uh, have the word and prayer time, heavy on prayer, and they all pray for each other and weep and hug on each other because they're brothers and sisters, but they can't see each other all the time. And uh, they have to be secret believers, so then they... Uh, they disperse the same way. It takes an hour to disperse, and you've got your time when you can leave, and what direction you go when you leave, and it's all very orchestrated. I remember thinking, uh, I don't think this will go over in the States. I don't think people do that. They will we'll forget that. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to come at 6.15 if we're starting at 7. I don't care what number I drew. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to do this. Um, matter of fact, I want to come at 7.15, yeah. or half the singing's over, so, you know, uh, we're, we, we would not be into that, but um, that's where they gather from in a huge uh, country with a billion people, and uh, God's moving there, moving in China. There's a mighty revival happening there. Um, and while I was there, we baptized a young man who came to the Lord in a cold bathtub in a concrete building. We uh, got enough water in there and baptized him, and he was uh, going to a, a college there. You have to be assigned by the government to a college. You can't just apply and go. But if you get an assignment to go to a college, that's quite prestigious and exciting. Instead of being sent to the, to the labor camp, so to speak, the, factories and so forth and so this guy was in a college and he, he gave his heart to the Lord and, and began to show signs of being a, 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 a walk, uh, someone who wanted to walk with the Lord, a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ and so we baptized him. I don't know how to this day but the authorities found out and he was taken out of school and shipped off to one of the hard labor camps in western China for the rest of his life. And I was so upset when I heard about it. I just went, oh, this is so awful. This little Chinese gal just pats me on the back. No, no, don't be upset. Don't be upset. There's lots of Christians in the labor camps out there. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. And we'll see him in eternity. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's who I'm talking about. Now, that's a value system. That's good. That is most excellent. Oh, yeah. They weren't upset at all. Nobody sat around and cried or anything. And there'll be lots of Christians out there, and we'll see them in eternity. Like it was around the corner. Right. 
But for them, life is so miserable that it's around the corner. Uh -huh. 